In this video, we will provide stepwise instruction for performing an ultrasound examination of the shoulder. For this protocol, we will be using a high-frequency linear probe. The probe marker should be oriented cephalad or toward the patient's right throughout the protocol. As some conventions call for medial probe marker orientation, we suggest labeling images for clarity. Begin the exam with the patient sitting with their symptomatic arm in a position of comfort. Palpate laterally along the patient's clavicle until you locate the acromioclavicular, or AC joint. Place the probe, oriented with the marker facing the patient's right, at this location to visualize the AC joint, which normally appears as a V-shaped hypoechoic to anechoic area. Alternatively, place the probe with the marker facing the patient's right at the level of the clavicle and follow the clavicle laterally until the AC joint is seen. Pathologies such as traumatic AC joint separation may be visualized. From the AC joint, palpate inferiorly until you locate the bicipital groove, which is situated between the greater and lesser tuberosities of the humeral head. The long head of the biceps tendon travels within this groove. Alternatively, move the probe inferiorly from the AC joint until the greater and lesser tuberosities of the humeral head are visible. With the probe oriented transversely at the bicipital groove and the marker facing the patient's right, examine the tendon. With the biceps tendon in the center of the screen, Rotate the probe so the marker points cephalad to examine the tendon in longitudinal view. Typically, tendon tears and ruptures may be identified by tendon irregularities in surrounding hypoechoic or anechoic fluid. Irregularities may also be noted in cases of tendinopathy. Diagnosis can be aided by having the patient supinate and flex their arm. Since the biceps tendon origin site is within the glenoid, a shoulder effusion may lead to the development of hypoechoic fluid surrounding the biceps tendon. This can be misinterpreted as biceps pathology. With a transverse view of the biceps tendon groove and the marker facing the patient's right, ask the patient to externally rotate their arm. With this movement, Note the appearance of the bird's beak shaped subscapularis tendon where it inserts into the lesser tuberosity. Rotate the probe so the marker faces cephalad and examine the subscapularis tendon in its transverse plane. A unique characteristic of the subscapularis tendon is its myotendinous structure with characteristic fibular tendinous bundles exhibiting anisotropy within a hypoechoic feathery surrounding. This can be misinterpreted as pathologic. Palpate for the acromion process. Place the ultrasound probe at the acromion and visualize the acromion and humeral head. The supraspinatus travels between these two structures. Alternatively, with the probe at the AC joint and the marker facing the patient's right, rotate the probe so the marker is oriented cephalad and visualize the acromion and humeral head. Use dynamic evaluation with shoulder abduction to assess for impingement. If the patient reports pain that correlates with movement through this arc, yet you do not visualize pathology, the patient may still have symptomatic subacromial impingement. For this examination, crass positioning is preferred. If this is not possible for the patient, with their arm in extension, have them perform internal rotation of the shoulder. Place the probe with the marker facing anteriorly below the level of the acromion to visualize the supraspinatus tendon overlying the humeral head. Rotate the probe so the marker faces cephalad and examine the tendon in transverse orientation. Evaluate for signs of tendon tear or rupture.
have the patient rest the symptomatic forearm in a position of comfort. Place the probe with the marker-oriented cephalad on the lateral margin of the proximal humerus. Locate the humeral head, which should appear light bulb shaped with even contours. With special attention to sites of tenderness, fan through the head of the humerus to evaluate for cortical disruption or overlying hematoma, which may suggest the presence of a fracture. Have the patient rest the symptomatic forearm in a position of comfort. For this examination, the curvilinear probe may be preferable depending on body habitus. Place the probe, oriented transversely, below the scapular spine at the level of the posterior glenohumeral joint. Examine the posterior humeral head and scapula to evaluate for horizontal alignment of the joint and for potential effusion. In this view of the glenohumeral joint, the infraspinatus tendon can be evaluated longitudinally and transversely. Thank you for watching. We hope that this guide will empower providers like you to feel more comfortable using ultrasound in the diagnostic workup of shoulder pain.